training. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. How can I help you, Twainy? Yes, I've been um I've been watching a lot of your videos and um they're really awesome. I want to firstly say that um I've been like watching a lot of them probably this whole week, and um I was gonna set up a one on one, but then I was like, okay, let me get on the live stream. And I'm sorry, I'm getting wordy. Um, so my mom was in the hospital um starting last year in June, and um she's been she she was a she had renal failure for her kidneys prior to, so she got a new kidney around 15 years ago or so. And then recently she's had a liver failure. So um, they had to have a liver transplant June 6th um, of 2023. Now she's been in the hospital for literally the ICU this whole, this whole entire year. And it's been a very tough time for me and my family in regards to us like, you know, having to change up our whole overall lives. And um, she's been on the vent for a very long time as well. When she was in the hospital, she started off, everything was going fine. Uh, maybe the first like month or so, everything was good. We were gonna be feeling like she was gonna go into recovery. Then she had twitching on the right side of her face and we didn't know what was going on. And then all of a sudden she had to be sedated very heavily. And then they figured out later on that she had a stroke. Um, so that was the first thing. And then after that, they were trying to figure out how to get her back good. But then um, neuro, there was something going on with the brain. And also she was in um, serious depression. And then she started getting um, like dependent on the vent. And, you know, now, you know, fast forward. Now we're in a position where, you know, her kid, her, her liver is better to be transparent. Um, it's not at the same place it was. But then now it's so hard to get her off that vent. And every time we try to get off the vent and they try to take her off the vent for a, a decent amount of time, she's having the CO2 buildup. And then it, and then with the CO2 buildup, she can't tolerate it for a long time. And then she has to get back down to high vent settings. And then we start this whole thing over again. And then also she's been in there for a year. So she's prone to infections. And every time she gets an infection, then she gets like, then she gets like really sleepy. They have to put her like, they, 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 when she's very sleepy like that, she has no energy, she has no strength. She can't breathe down deeply then her, her lungs are not strong enough. It's just like this whole long cycle and it keeps on going. And each and every time, you know, we're not that we're scared, but we're in a position where we don't know if, you know, she'll come out of infection if she is to have an infection again. Um, last week, because it was her first full year at being at the hospital, I don't know. The doctors came up to us and had a conversation with us, um, the liver team, as well as, you know, some of the ICU team and let us know that, um, you know, they wanted to see about, you know, doing a couple things. And first step would be DNR, do not resuscitate if it comes to that point. Um, the second one was getting to a long-term facility. The third one was for her to go home. Um, or going to quote unquote hospice. Now, uh, a caveat to this whole overall situation, she's worked at this hospital for around 30 years or 35 years, and she was the head nurse at the emergency room. So I do believe that they are giving her you know, great care as well as I do believe that she's in a situation and position that they want to be on her side, quote unquote, um, because she's been in this um, hospital for so long and she's given her life to them, um, so on and so forth. But I also know that, you know, they need to make money. Yeah. Twenty, just one more question. Uh, did you say kidney transplant or liver transplant? Uh, do you hear, you hear me now? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Did you, did, did you say kidney transplant or liver transplant? So she had a kidney transplant how many years ago, Grandma? Mm -hmm. Um, around 15 years ago, she had a kidney transplant first. So the yep. renal failure runs in my family. My grandma had it as well as my mom. Um, and she had it. So my grandma, yeah, a lot of family members ha have it. After that, I guess she had a cyst that was growing on the kidney and it was pushing down on the liver. So, so through that, she had to essentially be in a position where, you know, uh, she needed a new liver and it was it wasn't operating at full capacity grandma is there any i'm missing anything no. okay yeah i'm saying everything i think yeah yeah okay okay i hear you so and she is still in icu she's got a tracheostomy she does have a tracheostomy as well and she's in icu yeah. yeah where where are you located if i may ask um we're located in miami florida um miami. yeah and the hospital she's at i mean i i, I can say it out loud it's entirely up to you. You don't oh. need to. Okay. Yeah. yeah you, no, know, you don't need to yeah. give anything away. <laughs> the reason I ask, the reason I ask for location is simply, you know, is there a way for you to take her home? And that often comes down to the availability of services. 
Yeah. So um, I do believe that there's a, now an opening for us to take her home um, because the doctors are saying um, that they would want us to make a decision or they, they keep on pr 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 um, like pushing us to say something. But I, they also are saying that they want to do their best to help her out in the position she's in. So th there is a possibility of taking her home. But the issue is, is that, you know, we don't have the you know, we don't have the wherewithal to make sure that she's going to be good because she's on the vent. Then on top of that, she could get infection. And on top of that, you know, if her CO2 goes up, I, I, we, I don't, you know. Can, can you tell me a little bit more about why CO2 is going up? Do you know why? Um, I'm guessing. Go ahead. Okay, I'm, I'm guessing that the CO2 is going up because she's like, she's on the vent and she's not getting the opportunity to breathe in as deeply as possible. Um, so it's like, so I guess she's retaining. She, the, yeah. the, 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 first, the first question that I have when CO2 is high is, is she potentially having, is there a history of asthma or COPD? So, um, did she have asthma, Grandma? No, she didn't have it. Okay, no, no CO2. Okay, what about... That's a dry problem. What about, is she taking any opiates at the moment? Are they giving her any opiates such as morphine, fentanyl, oxycodone? Is she in pain? Yes. So, okay. So she was having pain and she was having pain because she had a hematoma. Um, so they had to do a, so they had to do a liver biopsy um, and she was about to go to rehab. When they did the liver biopsy, maybe two days before she was going to rehab, they, they, they met, something happened where... Uh, it, like a vein was touched and she had a lot of internal bleeding with the internal bleeding she had a huge hematoma and they and they couldn't drain all of it so it was it was in her stomach area and with that being said i think that put a, like some like a lot of extra months to her overall process in, in all honesty okay how long ago was that um it was late last year let's say is in december or okay Jan, let's say Jan, let's say January or February. The, the, right. hemat the hematoma, Grandma. Last okay. The, the last hematoma. Year. The hematoma. Yeah. Last year. When was it? Okay, it was maybe let's say January or February. Not this okay. year. Last. It's fine, Grandma. It's fine. So, as of right now, do you know if she's getting any opiates, such as fentanyl, morphine, oxycodone, hydromorph? Have you heard of those medications? Um, I know that she was getting oxy um, at a certain point in time, but she doesn't do it as much anymore um, okay. because I like not not as much anymore. But she, I guess they give her what do they give her, down, Grandma? <laughs> it's fine, don't worry. Uh, I'm I'm not sure specifically okay. because yeah. because I would I would try and find that out, you know. But the other question that I have is. Do you know what ventilator settings she's on? It's not. It's not. Yeah, they they change. Yeah, they change it all the time. Um, she was on high vent settings. Now her pressure support maybe is at eight or ten. It's not nothing high. Um, okay. But it's, it 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 fluctuates. I think when when she has the issues with um her with the CO two rising, then she needs it more. And then when she doesn't, then she do, like they're trying to wean her off. But you know they try to they, they try to do it like multiple times. And when they're in the weaning process, the issue is is that um maybe they're weaning her too quickly, or they're trying to get her like they're trying to make it, it everything work out. Now they're trying to do a really slow process. So at certain points in time, she was going twelve hours, and fourteen hours, and sixteen hours in a day. And we're so close to that twenty four hour mark, but then all of a sudden she goes back to square one. And so now she's like at let's say. Like this week, she's. I mean, they can't get her on. They can't get her on TPs. In, in all honesty, TPN. And then, um, maybe last week she was doing four hours, five hours a day. Okay. Was, when you say so, she was off the ventilator on a trade mask. She is sometimes. She's off the ventilator for a few hours. Mm -hmm. So uh, they call that what rest period. And she can breathe for herself, but after a while, she has to go back on the vent. Okay, but she, it's not. But basically, what I'm hearing is there are time, there are periods where she's off the ventilator completely. Yes, but she still has that trick. 
Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. But that's the first step to get off that ventilator. Yeah. Once she's off the ventilator completely, that's when you can take the trach out. So that's, yeah. you know, that, that is positive overall, even though it's, you know, I understand it's been 12 months now, but that is positive that she does have time off the ventilator. Mm-hmm. Are they getting her out of bed? Are they mobilizing her? Yes, they, t- they take her out of bed every day and put her into the seat at least. Um, the, chair. The, the chair that's right next to her. Um, we try to okay. push to, for sunshine therapy as much as possible. Um, every time I'm there, I try to take her outside. Like I, I push for it um, like a lot, a lot. And then also I try to you know, move her limbs as much as I can. But you know, she's, she's really out of it every day or sleep, sleeping or very weak. So, I mean, I put, to, to, to put her legs up and her feet up, but you know, physical therapy doesn't come maybe as much because she's not fully, you know, like up. So she's weak. She's weak so she's weak. Okay. Yeah. She's got a peg tube and she's getting nutrition through the peg tube. Yes. They actually, yeah, they put her yeah. on the peg tube. Yeah. She, is she losing weight overall or is she gaining weight? Uh, I guess she's stable now. So I guess it's like the same weight now. I mean, at the beginning, she definitely did lose weight, but I, like now it's just the same. Right, right. Okay. Are they, are they feeling positive that they can get your mom off the ventilator? Do, they, do you think they have a plan to get her off the ventilator? That's an interesting question. Um, I think that... She's in the gray area. What they said, what they told us last week, and they say they say that she can. I mean, if if if, if another doctor came in for, that's outside the hospital and looked at my mom, they would say, "What are you guys doing? You guys might be fighting too much, and you know, there's nothing that that can be done at this point in time. You guys are taking it too far." But then also, you know, there's times that she has some positives in what she in, in what's going on, and they see that there's a, there's a, somewhat of a path to her getting better and getting out of the hospital. So it's like, um, I, she, they said she's in a gray area and they could see how she can get better. They could see how, you know, with infection, it could just knock her out really quickly. She's been fighting a lot of infections. She's also been fighting just, to, you know, with all the other things that have happened to her in regards to the stroke and the hematoma and, you know, the the blotched, the botched uh, liver biopsy. So it's just all these things that are happening and, you know, it's a series of unfortunate events. And she also messed up her foot while she was in hospital because she fell as well, so. How how does the stroke show up? Is she having a one sided uh, weakness? Yeah. So her the let's see. I mean, it's the is it the left side or the right side? Um, it's the right side of her body. The right side of her body. It's it's um. So at the beginning, her the right side of her face was twitching, and I seen it, and it was a lot of twitching. Um. So at that point in time, and this is like months ago, maybe now ten months ago. Um, then all of this, out of, out of sudden, they sedated her for maybe, maybe two weeks or so. Um, and then when she came out of it, just her right side of her face was really twitching. She was out of it every day. Um, and, um, and the right, like her right side of her body wasn't as strong anymore. Um, she, she can't really raise it. She can't really raise her foot. Um, I could noticeably see the differences when I was doing the exercises with her in the, in the bed. She couldn't really push the right side down as much as she could as possible and so on and so forth. What about uh, what about her cognition? Has that suffered from the stroke? Yeah. So, okay. So, well, let me even let's talk a little bit more about the right side of her her body. Um. So 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 at that point in time, with the twitching, they had to see about seizures, and and they were giving her um Ativan when they felt like twitching was a little bit much, and she could be she could possibly go into a seize because there were some times when she would just like possibly st- like stop and we would just get scared. So neurology came down and they were trying to figure out a lot of different things in regards to, you know, making sure her mental status was there and she wasn't necessarily fully there mentally. So we had to do a lot of EEGs to make sure, but they said that she wasn't seizing when they were doing the EEGs, but they also said that she was in, she's extremely depressed as well as she wasn't, you know, with, with, with being in the hospital so long, I don't think she was fully here with us um, for some time. I think right now she's at a more, you know, sustainable place, but she's been crying like a lot, like every single day. It's like a lot of crying. Every time she opens her eyes, it's insane amounts of crying. It's it's really draining to be transparent. And, um, you know, we go every day and we try to be a rock for her as much as we possibly can, but it can be a lot at times. And, you know, but she is crying a lot and she's saying that she wants to go home, but then, you know, we don't know if, I, I, I don't know what the best alternative is. And, and yeah. you know, yeah, 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 yeah. 
do you know do you know if someone has done a swallow assessment with her yeah so they actually did do a swallow assessment with her um what was it a month and a half ago they were trying to they were trying to get her to get her on it and they were trying to start her back on liquids or maybe two months ago now so they did it and she wasn't she didn't what's what they call it um when they did the, the swallow test grandma and she was not aspirating she wasn't is that the word yeah aspirating yeah, yeah aspirating yeah they, they 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 checked her off to to swallow and whatnot but then right as they were doing that and giving her the opportunity to you know do liquids and she took steps back again and she had to get off of that and um you know it, that's the tough part because every time we go forward then we go back so she didn't pass the swallow test at the time no she she did pass a follow um, <laughs> she did pass the swallow test but then um when she got off of it then she went backwards okay the reason i'm asking for the swallow test in particular is so let's just wave a magic wand for a minute and say she comes off the ventilator, right? Mm -hmm. Then the next step is to remove the tracheostomy. Now the tracheostomy can only be removed if certain boxes are ticked. One of those yeah. boxes that needs to be ticked is to pass a swallow assessment. Yes. Right. So with all of that said, you know, if she can come off the ventilator, it sounds to me like she has a chance to maybe have the tracheostomy removed because she has passed the swallow assessment at some point. Right. So I'm just yeah. trying to think ahead, you know, if she can stay on that path of getting weaned off the ventilator, is it realistic for her to also have the tracheostomy removed at some point with what you are sharing with me? I, I think it is within the realm of possibility. You know, that's yeah. assuming she can, you know, get, keep getting stronger, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's it breaks my heart you know listening to you that she's in there crying every day yeah you know like they i know there's no quality of life in an environment like that mm -hmm. no you know no. it's just terrible and uh, if it's been 12 months now you know it's probably time would be ideal to get her home yeah by the same token it has to be safe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know it has to be safe and you have to find someone in miami who can help you to get her home safely and lo and behold she will need 24 hour intensive care nurses at home to make that happen mm -hmm. as yeah. long as she has the ventilator or a tracheostomy or both yeah. right? if she if she can be weaned off both she won't need icu nurses at home mm -hmm. you know, she will need a different level of care, of care but as long as she has a ventilator and or a tracheostomy she will need ICU nurses 24 hours a day. Otherwise, it won't be safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just one more question. She's not on dialysis, is she? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she is now. She is. Yeah. So they do it every day um, now. She wasn't doing. She was. They got her off of dialysis, um, and her kidneys were coming back fully. Um, they came back fully, but then when they did the liver biopsy, one kid. And they, oh, not so not both kidneys. Well, one kidney came back, and um, when they were doing the liver biopsy, it it, it really messed up the kidney. And I, I don't know if it's going to knock back on again now, to be honest. Right. And and they wouldn't be able to do any level of transplant because their body is just too weak. On, on, yeah, on, no, she, on, yeah, that would be very difficult. Yeah. Um, are they are they pushing you? Do you think like like they're pushing you towards palliative care and end of life care? not not fully um not fully i think they're, they're pushing us towards they're not fully I, I think that they're pushing us towards it seems like they're even with it you go into a long-term facility or you go depends home which doctor yeah and again I, okay good yeah it depends on which doctor because the icu team might have a perspective the liver team they, they they work really hard on you know getting her through it but then the issue is is that you know she's just been there for a very long time so i think they both i think those both teams have maybe possibly different perspectives uh, liver team maybe also wants her to, yeah. to go to another facility i don't know i don't she know yeah no like, i'm not she looks like she could heal but everything is taking a long time like yeah. they it's over a year now but it's not the same problem every day every every time that something happens it sets her back however i i should have checked this out because 
they told me that she's now an SIMV. Yep. Yep. And honestly, I don't remember what it does, but I think it's the more, it's the area that helps her breathing. If she's if she's in SIMV now, it yes. means that the machine is pretty much doing all the work. Oh. Yeah. SIMV pretty much means she gets a rate from the machine every minute. You know, that could be 10, it could be 12, it could be 20, uh -huh. you know, what, whatever they deem. I would actually say it's probably more towards the 20 side because her CO2 is high. Yes. Right. Um, which... You know, I would say with what you've shared with me earlier that she had time off the ventilator a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. If she's now in SIMV, I would say that makes it less likely for her to be weaned off the ventilator. Wow. When was the last time she was off the ventilator completely? Do you know? Um, the last time she was off the ventilator completely was um, last, yes, last week, I'll say. Okay. And, All um, right. and, and maybe we were trying to get her up to five hours with the um because i we're, i speak to the respiratory therapist every day and they come in and they see if there's an order in for her to be on off the ventilator on the tps and then she also has the voice um thing and she doesn't speak as much now. Speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah um look if she's look something might have changed between last week and now maybe her co2 has gone up which is why they're putting her back on simv i don't know i would need to look at the medical records or talk mm -hmm. to someone directly but that would be my estimate here mm -hmm. right let's just wave a magic wand and you wanted her at home again i don't know how much research you've done you know we are also providing a service intensive care at home not in miami at the moment we could uh, potentially help you privately you know okay. with private nurses but you know you would have to pay out of pocket you know that would be very expensive of course yeah um, but i'm not aware of a provider in miami that can take someone home on a ventilator as complex as your mom i'm not aware of it we could do it yeah. but it would it would be privately if that makes sense no that makes total sense it makes total you sense. know but but you know in terms of getting her home logistically i argue it's doable you know and the sooner she can go home probably the more she will improve just simply from a psych on a psychological level you know she's uh -huh. literally desperate to go home but then my only question is if we take her home because I, I it wouldn't be a situation where i wouldn't want to take her home but is that you know because I, I, I i'm also looking at her quality of life and i don't believe that her being in the hospital is the best thing to be honest she just looks up in the air and she doesn't really want to watch anything anymore it's like the same old stuff um and i know she doesn't want to be there my only thing is if we take her home are we putting her at a, are we putting her at a disservice as well and possibly you know not being able to take care of her in, in the in the highest way possible um is my only question yep so the the challenges that i can see with home care is you know if you set it up with 24-hour icu nurses and you set it up with an rt coming you know and the doctor overseeing it pretty much everything they're doing there at the moment can be done at home right gotcha. and the only exception to that is if she requires vasopressors or inotropes like epinephrine norepinephrine vasopressin do you know if she's on any of them Irma. um she's not on any of those medications permanently but when she needs pain medication i can't remember sometimes she gets diluted yeah she gets diluted that. yeah yeah diluted is is just a uh, pain medication i'm more about the, the medications that i just mentioned the epinephrine no. or epinephrine they, they are life support. They are considered life support for low blood okay. pressure. If she doesn't have them, Sometimes. The, I argue she's stable enough to go home with okay. the right level of support. With yeah. The right support. Okay. 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 That's positive reassurance. Okay. Now, m my last thing, I don't want to, I know, I, I know you're only an hour. But if I wanted to actually have a follow up with you, is that, is that possible as well? Of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh. Just, um, just contact me. Um, either send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com or just call me on one of the numbers on the top of the website, intensivecarehotline.com. Awesome. And, right. and, 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 and your services are not in Miami either? 
Well, not yet. However, what what we are good at is we are hiring we are hiring nurses in different locations. You know, gotcha. for us it really comes down on putting up a job ad and finding nurses really, and we 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 are good at that. Gotcha. Okay, okay, okay. I really, really appreciate you taking the time to listen to my story, as well as um, you answering all the questions, because um, I, it was really appreciated. It's a great pleasure, Twenty. I hope, you know, I hope it all goes well, and feel free to reach out to me anytime. Awesome. Thank you, Patrick. It's a great, great, it's a great pleasure. All the best to you and your family. All the all best. Right. Ciao. Thank you. Bye. Bye.